we are going to start EDC, okay, electronic devices and circuits. Electronic devices and circuits. EDC. The topics that are going to be covered in this one are first one we are going to say semiconductor physics. Semiconductor physics. One of the important one, semiconductor physics. What are the topics, things we are going to see in semiconductor physics also I will give it later. The next one is we are going to see diodes. Okay, a PN junction diode, a PN junction diode. The next one we are going to see is transistors. The next one is VLSI. Okay. The last one is up to electronic devices. up to electronic devices. Now, here diodes we are going to see a PN junction diode, Gina diode, vector diode, tunnel diode, all these things. And the up to electronic devices we are going to see photodiode, LED, avalanche diode, like that some extra diode that are not covered here. Okay. Now comes, and on average how many marks we can expect from this subject? EDC. If you see previous 4-5 years, on an average we are getting 10 marks. If you see last year or before that year we are having 11 to 12 marks also asked for from EDC. Once upon a time it is asked 7 to 8 marks, 9, okay it is varying. On an average we can expect around 10 marks from this one. The other one is, it is a theoretical subject as well as problematic. If you see some other subjects, it is purely mathematical related things. Formula problems, formula problems. But here, theory also equivalent, is important. We require the theory as well as we require the problems also. The equal weightage for the theory and problems. Then if you see here, some of the cases, units for the x, is ask units, what are the units for this, what are the units for this, units also important one, okay, that is why theory is also equally important in EDC and this is fundamental one, okay, average we are get, going to get 10 marks already I said. Coming to this first topic, semiconductor physics, what we are going to see in semiconductor physics? I think most of the university syllabuses directly starts from diodes. Very rare universities are starts with semiconductor physics. Okay? That is why we will concentrate more on the semiconductor physics also. What are the things here we are going to study? Here we are going to see energy band diagram, energy band diagram, okay. energy band diagram, then we are going to see diffusion, what is meant by diffusion, what is meant by drift, what is meant by conductivity, resistivity then current density okay then we are going to see types of semiconductors, types of semiconductors. The next we are going to see
concentration of electrons concentration of electrons and holes like this we are having some more topics okay donor concentration acceptor concentration all these things we are going to see in this one this is semiconductor physics coming to diodes first we are going to start with the pn junction diode how a pn junction diode is formed what are its characteristics capacitance how how uh, diode offers a capacitance types of resistances offered by a diode okay then we are going to see a tunnel diode varactor diode gna diode special purpose diodes okay after that we are going for a, we are coming for a transistors then very large scale integration it's one of the important topic nowadays old and last if you see last before 10 years there were less number of questions on vlsi more number of questions on transistors it's bipolar junction transistors field effect transistors metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor but nowadays more questions are coming from mosfet and vlsi old and days there were more number of questions on bjt but nowadays there are more number of questions on mosfet how a mosfet behaves characteristics of a mosfet then some of the theoretical questions are from vlsi then comes opto electronic device we are going to see led photodiode avalanche diode all these things okay now we'll start with the first today's topic semiconductor physics okay all the materials available are classified into three categories on what basis they are classified based on the energy band diagram based on the energy band diagram the materials are classified into three categories what are those first one is insulators second one is conductors third one is semiconductors based on the energy band diagram the materials are classified into three categories insulators conductors semiconductors now first we are coming for insulators energy band diagram of an insulator this is valence band this is conduction band this area is called forbidden energy gap okay it's zero this is ev this is ec this is infinity from here to here it is called valence band from here to here it is called conduction band this is called forbidden energy gap and it is denoted as eg forbidden energy gap what is forbidden energy gap that is equals to ec minus ev it's approximately around which is approximately around 10 electron volts if it is an insulator if it is in an insulator the forbidden energy gap is 10 approximately around 10 electron volts clear now comes what is the meaning of valence band what is the meaning of conduction band what the valence band contains what the conduction band contains let us suppose an atom this is a nucleus this is outermost shell okay 
outer most orbit or outer most star let us suppose there are three electrons are there assume this is nucleus there are three electrons are in the outer shell these three electrons are called valence electrons that means now the valence band contains these three electrons the electrons in the valence shell contain or will be in the valence band now let us suppose we given some energy this electron moved to here there is a hole will be created that we'll see later how hole hole will be created like that now this electron is free from the force of the nucleus it is free it can move freely it is not restricted to outermost orbit it's a free this is called free electron this is called bound electron it cannot move freely it has to move in the outer shell only whereas this is a free electron it is comes out of the nucleus force therefore this is called free electron this is called bound electron current is always due to free electrons not due to bound electrons there indirectly helps for the whole movement these these valence electrons indirectly will help for the movement of the whole but they will not constitute current if 100 valence electrons are there in an atom 50 valence electrons in an atom in both the cases current is same because current is always due to free electrons not due to valence electrons so here let us suppose in this case this hole this sorry this electron is free electron it will be here the free electron will be here so the conduction band contains conduction band contains free electrons valence band contains valence electrons as well as what the valence shell contains as well as hole what is meant by hole i will explain okay afterwards so the valence band contains valence electrons and holes whereas conduction band contains free electrons now what is the what is the difference between a free electron and valence electron valence electron is bound to the nucleus force it cannot move freely whereas this electron is a free electron it can move randomly it can move whatever the way it want therefore current is always due to free electrons not due to valence electrons valence electrons indirectly will help the whole flow that i will see now when this valence electron becomes a free electron i taken previously here one electron now i made it as a free electron that means this electron becomes a free electron when it becomes a free electron that depends on the material if it is an insulator if it is an insulator you have to give 10 approximately 10 electron volts to make this electron as a free electron to make this valence electron as a free electron approximately you have to give this much of energy how much of energy forbidden energy gap that is easy that is nothing but 10 electron volts this is too large that the atom is not going to or crystal is not going to withstand that much energy therefore in insulators there are no free electrons valence electrons becomes a free electron if you give 10 electron volts but the crystal is not able to withstand that much it's going to burn therefore if you give 10 electron volts or 20 electron volts the, uh, the uh, device is going to damage that crystal is going to damage but insulator never becomes an conductor okay if you give 10 electron volts of energy to electron which is in a valence band it will move to the conduction band it becomes an a conductor but the problem is if you give 10 electron volts the crystal itself, itself is not going to in a position to withstand that much of energy it's going to burn therefore insulator always acts as an 
insulator only if you do it's not possible to give 10 electron volt it will not withstand is it clear now what is this okay clear this what is the meaning of forbidden energy gap this much of energy has to be supplied to move an electron from the valence band to conduction band that is forbidden energy gap now what is this valence band what is this conduction band what is meaning of band band now that means this contains some energy levels one this one energy level this another one energy level another energy level like this infinite discrete energy levels are there what is this energy level hole will have some energy or el electron will have energy here it is valence electron is uh, here it's there it, but nothing but it is having some energy that is that energy is let us suppose here that electron this electron is here that means here okay like this so many atoms are there in a crystal okay all the valence electrons one electron one electron combining all this is closely separated energy levels constitute a band now the question arises what is the first question whether this energy level of this one and this one are not same all the same orbit same outermost orbit that means this energy level and this energy level has to be same or not but it is not same why pauli exclusion principle says that no two electrons have same energy levels that's nothing but it says same for quantum numbers so one of the thing for us is no two electrons in an atom will have same energy level this valence electron this valence electron as our knowledge it has to be have a same energy level but practically because of pauli exclusion principle this energy uh, uh, this energy of this valence electron is slightly different not so much different slightly different compared to the energy level of this one therefore this energy level this energy level if you see they are side by side with each other okay combiningly all those energy levels constitute a band known as valence band similarly all the free electrons also will not have same energy level they are nearer to each other combining all the energy levels of the free electron constitute a current uh, sorry constitute a band known as conduction band whereas here there are no in this area forbidden energy gap forbidden okay in that area there is no electron there is no hole there is no free electron there is no valence electron there is no hole nothing will be there if you use sufficient energy electron will move from valence band to conduction band now an insulator sorry insulator there are no electrons available in the conduction band if it has to conduction uh, some electrons has to move from valence band to conduction band you have to give 10 electron holes if you give that much energy that is going to burn it's not going to withstand so insulators no since no free electrons are available therefore conductivity is zero conductivity is zero example for insulators are diamond wood plastic diamond wood plastic okay is it clear now energy band diagram of a insulator no electrons available in the conduction band all the electrons are in the valence band only therefore there is no current that's why insulators are not at all conducts electricity the next one is conductors energy band diagram of this one is take this is conduction band let us suppose i am indicating like this this is conduction band okay now from 
from here to here it is valence band. Okay. Therefore here this is EV, this is EC, it's zero, it's infinity. So in this case E G equals to zero. That means there is no differentiation between valence electrons and free electrons. In met in conductors there is no difference between valence electron and free electron. All are free electrons only. Valence electrons equals to free electrons because there is overlap with each other. No energy is required to move a, an electron from valence band to conduction band because they are overlapped with each other. Clear? Therefore, the forbidden energy gap is zero. No energy is required. Automatically, all the valence electrons, nothing but the free electrons. There is no differentiation. All the electrons are free electrons only. Therefore, current will be maximum. More number of free electrons are available. Therefore, current will be maximum. Current is maximum for a conductor. And forbidden energy gap equals to zero. Example for conductors are all metals. All metals. Copper example. Okay. Now, the next thing comes is take a metal. This is a metal. There are so many number of free electrons are there or not? There are so many number of free electrons are available or not? Now, if you take a metal, if you connect an ammeter, whether it has to show reading or not, current reading. Because at any point of time, at any point of time, there are so many number of, no, there is no differentiation between valence electron, free electron. That means all electrons are free electrons, means so many number of free electrons are available, means if you connect an ammeter here, it has to show some reading or not. Flow of current will, flow of electrons will give you current. Electrons are available, free electrons all are, they can move randomly, they can move. So current is going to exist or not? So take, let us suppose this is a copper wire, connect an ammeter, it has to give a reading or not? It will not give any reading. Why it is not going to give any reading? Okay? Now, this electron is a free electron, this electron is also, all the electrons are free electrons, the name itself says free means they can move in different directions randomly. Okay. Now, one electron is moving in the, this direction means another electron is moving in this direction, one electron is moving in this direction means another electron is moving in this direction. Okay. Now there is a some current due to this electron, there is a some current due to this electron, both are in the opposite direction, therefore nullify with each other. One electron is moving in this direction means another electron is moving in this direction, therefore current due to this one is nullified by this one. Similarly, let us suppose one is moving in this direction, another one is moving in this direction, therefore it. So at any point of time in a metal or in a conductor, it is assumed that at any point of time the number of electrons flowing in one direction is equal to the number of electrons flowing in the opposite direction. Therefore, current equals to zero. Take a metal, it's assumed that the number of electrons traveling in one direction exactly equals to the number of electrons traveling in the opposite direction. Hence, current is equals to zero under normal condition. That's open, that is called open circuit condition. Now to have a current, okay, but I want current. There are so many number of electrons are there. I want current. What I have to do? We have to make sure that all the charge carriers are aligned, all the electrons are aligned in one particular direction. Then 
Insta, one is moving in the direction, another one is moving in the direction. Instead of making like that, if all the charge carriers are moving in only one particular direction, then current will be existed. How to make all the charge carriers has to flow in only one direction? For that purpose, you have to apply external field. External field, ERV. Okay. If you apply external electric field, here it's higher potential, here it's lower potential. So what is going to happen? The electrons are, this is positive potential, attracted in this direction. That means electrons are flowing in this direction means current is going to So all the electrons Now, whatever the this is, okay, now this also, this, everything, all the electrons, aligned in one particular direction, that means electrons are flowing in the direction, that means current is existed, now all are aligned in one particular direction means current is going to exist. So, this is called external DC voltage. Now current is existed. This mechanism is called, this mechanism is called diffusion. Sorry, sorry, it's not diffusion, it's drift. It's called drift. Okay, the mechanism in which all the charge carriers are aligned on one particular direction because of the applied external field is called drift mechanism. And now current is existed or not? This current is called drift current. Drift current. And this is called biasing. Application of external DC voltage, I think I, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, the process of application of external DC voltages is known as biasing. We are applying DC voltage to make it as a useful device. That is called biasing. Because of this external voltage, there exists a current and this is called drift current. So, first condition to have a drift is apply external field is required. Okay. So, in a metal or in conductors, current will be exist here. If a external field is applied, that mechanism is called drift and the current due to this mechanism is called drift current. Next. The expression for drift diffusion, once I completed the uh, semiconductors, I will give that expression for drift and diffusion. Uh, once I completed the basic theoretical thing, then we will go for the formula. Now comes the next one is semiconductors. This is valence band, this is conduction band forbidden. If the forbidden ga energy gap is around 1 electron volts, then it is called semiconductor. Conductor is, conducts electricity heavily. Insulator, it is not at all conducts electricity. Whereas semiconductor conductivity lies between conductors and insulators. It is not so high as conductors, it is not equal to zero as insulator, whose conductivity lies between insulators and conductors. Okay? Now, 
this E is equals to around 1 electron volt or this one. What is the meaning of this 1 electron volt? The amount of energy required by the valence electron to move from valence band to conduction band is only 1 electron volt. That means if you give one, let us suppose this is nucleus, this is outermost orbit, one electron, another electron, let us suppose another electron, there is another electron. This valence electron becomes a free electron, this is a free electron, this is valence electron. This electron becomes a, this valence electron becomes a free electron if you give only one electron volt. This one electron volt is so small that at room temperature itself, at room temperature itself, this electron acquires the energy that called thermal energy. Thermal means temperature, okay. Because of the thermal energy, this electron will acquire the energy and becomes free electron. So, at room temperature, the conductivity existed, but it's not so high, it's medium one, okay, in between the conductors and insulators, therefore it's called semiconductors, whose conductivity lies between insulators and conductors. Now, the absence of, now if you give one electron volt, it goes, becomes a free electron, therefore here it is called, this is called hole. This is called free electron. The free electrons will be the in the free electrons will be in the conduction band, holes and valence electrons are in the valence band. Clear? The most commonly used semi semiconductors are silicon and germanium. Silicon and germanium. There is a carbon is also there, but it's not a semiconductor. Carbon is available in two different forms. Okay, graphite form and diamond form. In diamond form, it is a insulator. In graphite form, it is a semiconductor. That's why we are not going to use a carbon for a semiconductor purposes. We are going to use silicon and germanium. These two are most common. Only used semi conductors. The forbidden energy gap is equals to 1.21 electron volt at 0 degree Kelvin for silicon. 5.785 electron volt at 0 degree Kelvin for germanium. Clear? Now, this E g equals to 1.1 electron volt at 27 degree centigrade. That's nothing but at room temperature for silicon. And for germanium, it is 0.72 electron volts at, I'll give it a formula also. Next. So, at room temperature, some of the electrons will move from valence band to conduction band, resulting in a current, and a, a small number of electrons will jump from valence band to conduction band, a small current exists. But at zero degree Kelvin, called as absolute temperature, absolute zero, minus 273 degree centigrade, 0 degree Kelvin, whether current will exist in a semiconductor. At minus 273 degree centigrade, nothing but 0 degree Kelvin, absolute 0, no 
electron can move from valence band to conduction band because energy is not there. Zero degree Kelvin. No thermal energy is supplied. Okay. Therefore, no free electrons available in the conduction band at zero degree Kelvin. No free electrons available in the conduction band means it acts as an insulator. At zero degree Kelvin, at zero degree Kelvin, semiconductor acts as at zero degree Kelvin, semiconductor acts as an insulator because no free electrons available. At room temperature, some of the electrons are moving from valence band to conduction band. Therefore, there exists a current, acts as a semiconductor. The another important one is, the concept of electrons and holes will be in the semiconductors only. In the conductors, there is no concept of electrons, holes. Only electrons will be there. There is no concept of holes. In insulator also, there is no concept of hole because there is no electron is moving from valence band to conduction band. In conductors, there is no separation between the valence band and conduction band. All electrons are free electrons only. All the valence electrons are free electrons only because they are overlapped with each other. Therefore, there is no concept of holes in, that's another important, there is no concept of holes in conductors. Holes are there in semiconductors only. So, there are two types of charge carriers in semiconductors. One is electrons, another one is holes. Therefore, current will be existed due to electrons as well as due to holes. I will explain how a current is existed due to electrons as well as due to holes. That we will see. Now, the other thing, yeah, comes to this figure. There is an initial, I said, one valence electron is there. Uh, otherwise, take this valence electron. Right now, it's a valence electron, which is nowhere responsible the, for the current because it is under the nucleus force. It is under the nucleus force. If we give some energy around one electron volt, this electron becomes free electron. Now, here, this previously there is an electron either that is called valence electron. By acquiring the energy, this valence electron becomes a free electron. This absence of electron is called here hole. This is called free electron. It's a free electron, this is a hole. That means always free electron hole pair will be generated. Simple electron will not be generated, free electron is not generated, hole is not generated individually. Free electron hole, once again I am using the word free electron hole pair is generated. This is free electron, this is hole. Is it clear? Now, this once again valence electron, if we give sufficient energy to this free electron, valence electron, it becomes free electron. So, free electron, here absence of electron is nothing but a hole. So, free electron hole pair is going to be generated. So, here now, whatever the hole, this hole, this valence electron, valence electron holes will be in this valence band. Next, this free electron, this free electron will be in the conduction band. Now, once it is going into the conduction, this valence electron becomes a free electron by acquiring energy. It always will be in the conduction band only. It is always will be in the conduction band? No. After certain time, after certain time, after certain time, there may be a, some electron is coming, it is a free electron means it is randomly moving. There is a, okay, there is a, some, one electron some far away from neighboring atom, from neighboring atom is coming, free electron. Now, this free electron is having negative charge, this hole is having a positive charge. Therefore, they will attract with each other. They will recombine. Once they recombine, what is going to happen? What is happen? Previously, hole is there, free electron is there. After recombination, 
both will disappear it becomes valence electron that's important one okay free electron combines with hole becomes valence electron this is called recombination if, if you give sufficient energy to the valence electron if you give sufficient energy to the valence electron it acquires the energy and moves to the conduction band and a free electron hole pair is generated electron hole pair is generated after certain time the electron and hole may recombine and becomes free valence electrons so at any point of time the number of recombinations and number of generations are equal so therefore always same number of electrons same number of holes are going to be existed is it clear now this is important point for us these things are very very important one electrons generation recombination free electron valence electron hole okay now we know that this is a free electron can move randomly in different directions therefore automatically it constitute a current valence electron is bound to the nucleus force hole is bound to the nucleus force therefore they cannot move whatever the way they want because they are under the nucleus force then how they are going to constitute a current already i said valence electrons are nowhere responsible for the current free electrons but at the same time holes also responsible for the current conduction how holes are responsible for the current conduction now let us suppose there is one hole here one electron one electron one electron one electron one electron like this i take and this example i have taken in a horizontal direction in a circle shape i have taken like this so what is going to happen this electron is having a negative charge this hole is having a positive charge automatically there is a strong tendency that to attract with each other so it comes like this it comes like this okay that means here hole comes here electron comes previously hole is here now it is moved now once again hole is moving in the direction electron is moving in the direction okay therefore now hole comes here electron is come so holes are moving in this direction electrons are moving in this direction that's why always electron is flowing in the one direction means it's taken it as hole is taken in the opposite direction because hole is nowhere responsible for current conduction but they are acting as a carriers for the valence electron this electron like this okay sorry now it moves here now it becomes hole here next it comes here like this hole simply acts as a valence electrons carrier so hole is moving in this direction means electron is moving in this direction therefore it's always taken that current direction of uh, sorry hole is moving in one direction means electron is moving in the opposite direction now the total current is equals to current due to electrons plus current due to holes okay now we will have a break after break we will continue with the remaining things
now we'll take the questions its first question puja super node is used when there is a dependence source in between two node voltages right but what happen if independent source is connected between two node it is not related to our edc it's a networks question okay i think in the next things there is a doubt session will be there it's a networks question not related to edc okay next question puja how an electron flow in a metal practically until we are not applying any field now i said here it's a nucleus force this electron this electron this electron this electron these four electrons are called valence electrons they are bound by the nucleus force they cannot move okay they whatever that they want they cannot move because it's attracted by the nucleus force once one of the electron become a free electron who is going to stop this valence this electron to move freely the name itself is just free it can move randomly that's the property free electron property itself they can move randomly in any direction now it is moving in this direction there is some atom comes here it will collide then it will move in this one there is some more atom comes here it will collide like this some different different random directions it will move that's why this called free electron what is the difference between valence electron and free electron valence electron is not move it will not move free electron can move moving means current will exist but now the thing is if you apply a field if you apply a field all will be aligned in one particular direction clear puja next kirtana sir why current direction is from positive to negative now electron is having a negative charge okay now here there are so many electrons are there here a positive charge negative charge now what is going to happen here this electrons are attracted by the positive charge nothing but negative charge will repel positive charge will attract higher potential will attract so electrons are moving in the direction means current is current is fundamental thing is current direction is opposite to the electron direction so electrons are moving in the direction means current is taken from positive to negative clear but actually electrons are moving from negative to positive clear kirtana next piyush binani sir do holes really exist practically or we use it for our convenience yes they are not existed we are assuming our for convenience for our explanation purpose here absence of electron we have to differentiate here valence electron is there here absence of electron we have to differentiate it that's why we are assuming there is a hole is existed we are assuming clear piyush next kirtana sir what is the difference between valency and free electron valency means electron here free electron means here these three electrons are bound by the nucleus force this electron is not under the influence of nucleus force it can move whatever the way it wants it can any direction it can move randomly whereas these three electrons if they cannot move whatever the way they want if they are moving means within that outermost shell only they can move but they will not move out of the valence electron okay this is called these three are called valence electrons this is called free electron they, this is under the nucleus force this is out of the nucleus force they can move randomly is clear kirtana i will carry with the next our topics